something strange is happening with the North Star, Polaris, which is right over our North Pole. It keeps breaking astronomers' models of how stars are supposed to act. And we have here long exposure images showing stars appearing to whirl around Polaris, the North Star, which appears fixed in the sky. So something is up with the North Star. People have watched the North Star for centuries. Bright Star, also known as Polaris, is almost directly above Earth's North Pole and serves as a landmark in the sky for travelers without a compass. It's also Earth's closest Cepheid type of star that pulses regularly in diameter and brightness. And Polaris is part of a binary system. It's got a dimmer sister known as Polaris B that we can watch circling it from Earth. However, as we learn more, it's becoming clear that we understand less about Polaris. This is what authors wrote of a new paper on this famous star. The problem with Polaris, the North Star, is that no one can agree on how big or how distant it is from us. Astrophysicists have a few ways to calculate the mass, age, and distance of a star like Polaris. One method is a stellar evolution model, said new study co-author Hilding Nelson, astrophysicist, University of Toronto, Canada. Researchers can study the brightness, color, and rate of pulsation of the star and use that data to figure out how big and bright it is and what stage of life it's in. Once those details are worked out, Nielsen said, it's, hard to, it's not hard to figure out how far away the star is. It's fairly simple math once you know how bright the star really is and how dim it looks from Earth. These models are especially precise for Cepheids because their rate of pulsing is directly related to their luminosity or brightness. That makes it easy to calculate the distance to a, uh, any of these stars. Astronomers are so sure they understand the relationship that Cepheids have become critical tools for measuring distances all across the universe. But there are other ways to study Polaris, and those methods do not agree with the stellar evolution models. Polaris is what we call an astrometric binary, Nelson said, which means you can actually see its companion star going around it, sort of like a circle being drawn around Polaris, and that takes about 26 years. Researchers have not yet made detailed observations of a full circuit, circuit by Polaris B, but they've seen enough of the companion star in recent years to have a pretty detailed picture of what the orbit looks like. With that information, you can apply Newton's law of gravity to measure the masses of the two stars, Newton Nelson said. That information, combined with the Hubble Space Telescope parallax measurements, another way to calculate the distance to the star, led to very precise numbers on Polaris's mass and distance. Those measurements say it's about 3.45 times the mass of our Sun, give or take 0.75 solar masses. That's way less than the mass you get from stellar evolution models, which suggest a value of about seven times the mass of our Sun. This star system is weird in other ways. Calculations of the age of Polaris B suggest that the star is much older than its bigger sibling, which is unusual for a binary system. Typically, the two stars are about the same age. Nielsen, together with Haley Blinn, an undergraduate student and researcher at University of Toronto, generated a huge set of models of Polaris to see whether those models could reconcile all the data known about the system, but they couldn't. One possibility is that at least one of the measurements here is just wrong, the researchers wrote. Polaris is an especially difficult star to study, Nielsen said. Located above Earth's North Pole, it's outside the field of view of most telescopes, and the telescopes that have the necessary equipment for precisely measuring the star's properties are usually designed to study much fainter, more distant stars. Polaris is too bright for those instruments, in fact it's blinding for them. Nielsen said, but the data researchers do have, do, uh, do have seem uh, trustworthy and there's no obvious reason to doubt that information. These findings led Nielsen and Blinn to another strange explanation. Perhaps the main star of the Polaris system, 
was once two stars and they slammed together several million years ago. Such a binary collision, Nielsen said, can rejuvenate stars, pulling in extra material and making the stars look like they just went through the fountain of youth. Stars that result, in, uh, result from binary collisions don't neatly fit stellar evolution models, and such an event could explain the discrepancy found with Polaris. The researchers wrote, this would be an unlikely scenario, but it's not impossible. So far, none of the solutions are wholly satisfying. It's challenging to draw significant conclusions beyond the fact that Polaris continues to be an enduring mystery, and the more we measure, the less we seem to understand. This is what Nielsen and Blinn wrote. And this is on Live Science by Rafi Letzer. Now the North Star appears to stand still. It's known as Polaris, and it seems to never move. But how do we know that? It appears that when a camera is set up and takes photos over a period of time, the stars make a wheel. The point or focus of that wheel is our North Star. This is one reason when hiking at night, we can use the North Star to find north. Sea captains also use the North Star to navigate across the oceans when traveling because they could see the true north. Our Earth has a tilt, and that imaginary axis that demonstrates our tilt and rotation points to the North Star, Polaris. The North Star is special because it lies almost exactly above Earth's northern axis. It's like a hub of a wheel. It doesn't rise or set. Instead, it appears to stay put in the northern sky. And when you take a time-lapse picture of this phenomenon, the North Star does look like the, the hub of a wheel. It doesn't move. The North Star does move if you look took a picture, you'd find that it makes its own little circle around the exact point of the North Celestial Pole every day. It's because the North Star is really offset a little by about three quarters of a degree from Celestial North, and there's more. A single point of light that we see, as Polaris is actually a triple star system, or three stars orbiting a common center of mass, the primary star Polaris A is a super giant that's about six times the mass of our Sun, and a close companion, Polaris AB, orbits 2 billion miles from Polaris, much farther away, near the top of the illustration. The third companion, Polaris B, is located approximately 240 billion miles from Polaris A. Astronomers estimate Polaris distance at 430 light years. Polaris is a yellow supergiant star shining with a luminosity of 2,500 suns. So bottom line, in our lifetime, we don't live long enough to see Polaris change places in the sky because it's so far away. From our point of view in time, we don't see any movement at all, which is great because the star or stars have helped us navigate around the Earth for a very long time. And if you want to see the North Star, look for the Big Dipper and follow its pointer stars to the tip of the handle of the Little Dipper, and that's Polaris. The North Star is not the brightest star in the night, but it is the only constant star that you can rely on for many years to come. This is according to Taylor Science Geeks. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.